Hey, this is Leif Ganford. I played the cash register thief in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldavar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek Podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Poe Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Corey, and joining me are co hosts, Graham. What's up? Maureen. Hello. And Laurent. Laurent. Talk with a stick. Oh, my, my, my mic just went off for no apparent reason. I'm back. <laughs> That's good. And this is the first time we've had four hosts on one podcast. And we're doing okay so far, aside from needing to poke around with the stick, as Graham said. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, also joining us is very special guest Paul Warren. He was a stand-in double for Harry Potter on Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and Captain America on Captain America, the first Avenger. And he also played a ministry wizard in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hours Part 1, a Marauder feature in For the Dark World and a Russian zombie in World War C. So how are you, Paul? Hi, uh, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. We're very well. Well, thanks. It's great to have you join us today. Oh, it's good to be here. So getting right into the questions, my first question for you is, how did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Um, well, when I was uh, about 10 years old, um, I did a play, uh, a school production of Shakespeare, uh, Midsummer's Night's Dream, and I played Puck, you know, the little, little wimpy guy. And uh, from then on, I just thought, right, I just want to be an actor. I want to do monsters, I want to do creatures, you know, all the fun stuff. Um, I left school, but then I got a little bit sidetracked with a band, became signed, started touring. And it was only as I got later in life to my 30s that I started getting back into the acting again. And then it just took off from there, really, you know. Being a little weird, skinny guy, started getting some really cool stuff. <laughs> Very nice, yeah. My second question is, what was it like getting to be a stand-in double for the title character in Harry Potter? Did you get to work with Daniel Radcliffe? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, that was great. Um, when I first started doing it, though, to be honest, I'd never read the Harry Potter books. I'd maybe seen... The first two, what was it? The first one and then the Chamber of Secrets. Um, I hadn't seen any of the others. So when I went on there, I just thought, oh, it's a kid's movie. It's going to be some good fun. And it was only once I started working on it that I, I got to see, you know, how big it really was and, you know, uh, came to appreciate it a lot more. But, um, yeah, I worked with Daniel quite a bit. Um, being his, his double, um, I, in, especially in Order of the Phoenix, I did a lot of the broomstick flying. So a lot of my time was spent um, on the green screen. Um, flying broomsticks and, you know, working out moves and... 
my third question is, what was it like playing the border <laughs> creature in For the Dark World? Yeah, that was great. I mean, I only got to see it quite recently because um, well, it came out sort of what two months ago. But um, yeah, 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 I filmed filmed that about a year ago. That that was great fun being being part of the Marvel uh, universe. Um, I mean, the the thing with prosthetic work is, it's, you know, it's very grueling, very long hours, very physical. You've got to have a, a certain kind of uh, mentality to be able to to stand it. And not only that, once you're in the prosthetics, um, being able to perform in them, you know, it's all great, looking great, but if you can't perform then it's, it's just a nice thing. You hang on a hanger, isn't it, really? Um, so, yeah, it was very physically demanding. There was a lot of fight scenes between uh, the, the Marauders at the start of the film and Thor. Um, so I was getting knocked around a bit and explosions and that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it was great fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love really getting into the, the, the roles that are physical, um, especially when you've been sitting around in the makeup chair for, like, three hours every single morning. It's nice once they once you're on set to then be unleashed and be able to just physically just, you know, get it all out of your system. Yeah, definitely really cool. My fourth question is, what was it like having the zombie makeup put on for you, zombie and well boy, Yeah, again, that was a, that was a pretty, pretty grueling experience. Um, I think it was about three hours, three hours in makeup. Um, it was a strange, it was a strange film, that one, because, uh, I mean, it's been well documented that their production, um, financial issues and that kind of stuff and script issues um, so the actual stuff that actually doesn't actually appear in the movie it was part of a third act um, of the movie that was taken out and replaced with a whole new um, a whole new act that was written uh, pretty late on so all of that work unfortunately doesn't get to get to be seen at all but um, yeah it was hard it was very hard but it looked very cool and it's just a shame that nobody will get to see see the work that was done, you know? Yeah, definitely. And my final question is, do you have any upcoming acting roles or other projects you would like to talk about? This, yeah, I mean, I've done quite a bit recently. I, I don't know if I can talk too much about it, but there's, there's, um, there's, there's another Marvel film that I've just finished called uh, The Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, directed by James Gunn. Uh, which is is looking really really good. I mean, I know a lot of people are very excited about it, as you know, because it's a Marvel movie. But yeah. I think this is this is going to be blow people away. I mean, the stuff I was seeing every day and the stuff I was working on was just it was mind blowing. You know, so I think it's it comes out in August, and I think it's something to really really look forward to. Yeah, definitely. So that's all of my questions. Thanks very much for answering so, them, right. and I'll let my co-host Graham ask his questions now. Okay, cool. Hello there. Hi, man. Um, uh, my first question is, how does uh, double work differentiate from like the actual filming process? Do you think it uh, shows a different end of filmmaking in general? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't actually do double, double roles anymore, but I'm, I'm glad I did it at the start because it, it gave me great experience in, in film and film acting, you know, and film language, how to behave on a set, what to do. Um, your face doesn't get seen, but you work just as hard as, as you know, everybody else on the movie. Um, so you don't really get the reward, the rewards of actually sort of, um, being seen on the screen, but you still get the fun of saying, I'm, you know, I was part of Harry Potter or I was part of Captain America and just point out and go, you look, there's me and that kind of stuff. And but like I say, the most valuable experience I got from it was, um, how to behave on sets, you know, how to take direction. <laughs> Did you see much of a difference from like um, from actually having like a um, a role rather than being the double, or did you did you find the process very similar? Or it's it's very different, very different. Um, with the with the doubling stuff, it's very very physical. Um, you sometimes you deliver lines, sometimes you don't, depending on you know which actor you're you're acting against. Um, it's very more uh, do this, do that, copy this, copy that. You just saw what they did, you do that. You know, well, this is the idea we've got for you to do. So you don't really have as much control. In fact, you don't have any control over, over the character at all. Uh, when you're actually acting, uh, you get given the character to be able to develop and, and you work with the director and you work with the other actors and, and develop this, this character. When you're doubling, you sort of go in, do as you're told, and then get out, you know. But it's still, it's, they're both they're both good fun though. You know, yeah, I don't regret doing it. It was, it was great. It was a great experience. 
did you find it difficult at all to kind of get the mannerisms of the character down? Like, because you do have to kind of mimic the body language. Did you yes. find that at any, yeah. in any way difficult? Or? Yeah, I mean, was for Captain America, for example, um, they were trying to work out at the very, very early stages how they were going to do the effect of uh, Skinny Steve. Um, they didn't know if it was going to be a body double or if they were going to shrink him via CGI or, you know, do false perspective or they, they didn't know how they were going to do it. Um, I mean, in the end, they, they used all of those techniques. Um, and the finished film is probably about 80% Chris Evans. is is It's actually him shrunk down. All the other scenes, um, they've used doubles um, and, I, and I was one of them. And there was a couple of others in the world that would that would do certain scenes uh, for different stages. Like there was one when he was uh, transforming, and and um, but I was brought in at the very very start of it. And uh, what they did is they lined up a load of us together. I was at the bottom scale, and then they they had a whole line of people where it would go up to to a certain size, and then they would pick me as the skinny one, and they picked another guy as you know the 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 regular double. Um, and then I'd had to do uh, sort of some stop motion, uh, some motion capture tests they did. Um, they'd do things where they'd have sounds, where I'd have to react to sounds. You know, on certain beats, I'd have to be at a certain point. My arm would move up at one beat. and So that they could then do head replacement, CGI face replacement with Chris Evans. Um, but Chris was very, very sort of particular about wanting to keep as much of the character as him himself. He didn't want to give it to anybody else, you know, which is understandable. You know, because he he wants it to be his his performance. It doesn't he doesn't want it to be bits and pieces from everyone else. You know, it's his character. But in the end, they use various techniques, and yeah, yeah. So you had to you had to follow a lot of a lot of uh, specific direction. As you would if you're actually you you know get, getting a role on on its own, you do have to you know like you, the director's there for a reason. But like, uh, right. what is the um, view like in a character from a different set of eyes? Like, what do you, do you mean? So I think in his sense, like, um, what's the view like in a character from different eyes? Do you see a different perspective of a character at all with, um, you know? I think if, um, yeah, with with the with the double work, as I say, even if you did have a different perspective on on what you thought the character should be, you don't have any control over it. Um, it's all done. It's all it's all there. Um, so you just go in and it's all ready to go. Yeah, you don't you don't really have much input. Um, you kind of just like follow the list, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. You pretty much. It's pretty pretty basic kind of things. Um, it depends how physically demanding it is. I mean, with the Captain America stuff, with the with the motion capture, it has to be very specific, very precise. You know, because they're doing a visual effect, so it has to be has to be perfect. Something like the Potter stuff. Um, a lot of the a lot of the times. Uh, you'd sort of go in and, and they might not have an idea of what they want to do. They have the idea of it, but they don't have it planned out. They'll just sort of try and work it out on the day. So you do a lot of things where you just sort of, can you try this? Can you try that? And, you know, that kind of thing. It's all very, it's a strange, it's a strange process filmmaking. It's never, it's never really the same thing twice. Well, um, I have uh, one more question um, before I pass you on to Maureen. Um, okay. You've done a few like uh, sort of comic book uh, roles thus far. Yes. Um, are you a comic book fan uh, in general? And if so, what's your favourite and why? Yeah, when I was growing up, I mean, the best thing about doing the Marvel stuff now is, uh, I mean, absolutely, absolutely blows my mind. You know, being part of the Marvel universe and playing these these creatures uh, and characters because I grew up as a as a as a big Marvel fan. Uh, my favourite was um, Fantastic Four. Um, I was absolutely addicted to that. Um, I don't read them too much now, um, unless I'm actually doing the movie and I'll, I'll have to research, then I'll go and get what I need for Thor, I went back and got some stuff, and Guardians of the Galaxy I went through, and I've never read the Guardian stuff before, so I, that was all new to me, so I read all that kind of stuff. Um, but growing up, yeah, it was, it was Marvel. Marvel was, was, was my stuff. 